Man, open the floodgates on G6 comparisons and we got a lot of noise in comments and messages to put the U11 up against LG's recent price cuts, glass back designs, multimedia prowess, and innovative features. This was one of the toughest comparisons I've yet shot for Pocket Now, so buckle up. We've got a lot of ground to cover to see which phone might be worthy of your hard-earned cash. HTC U11 versus LG G6, it's go time. I always kick things off with design and for the first time in a while, I don't have an easy win to deliver. Both companies should be celebrated for shaking things up. Neither the G6 nor the U11 resembles efforts from last year. LG has been experimenting significantly, eventually arriving on this tall, skinny slab. HTC has walked away from machined aluminum in favor of a mirror finish rear that looks almost like liquid. It's one of the most slippery phones I've ever held, so use the snap-on case or be careful placing it on an uneven surface. It's the more daring design move though it does showcase fingerprints and micro-scratches more readily. Both manufacturers deliver handsets which stand out, but LG ekes out a win. The brushed Robocop titanium rear, the new aspect ratio flush camera sensors, and the G6 feels a bit better assembled on our review unit's cleaner transitions from glass to metal. Looking at the tech inside, the hardware debate stresses major differences in philosophy, a more flexible lifestyle handset versus a more powerful, focused flagship. No camera tricks, no headphone jack, and twice the built-in storage. The U11 does benefit from that Qualcomm 835 magic, snappier and lower power use. We get a nifty squeeze feature to fire up an app or take a photo, but that's hardly a revolutionary new way to engage with data and services over, say, a customizable button. LG takes the opposite and more adorned approach, dual cameras, built-in headphone jack, and better lifestyle durability. Though LG has built the G6 around last year's chipset, affecting performance against newer handsets. The U11 takes a win for the extra storage and horsepower, but a smartphone klutz should probably be looking at the G6. Now, LCD to LCD, the numbers sound more impressive on the G6, but overall surface area is nearly identical. This taller design delivers that area in a smaller shell. These two compete really well in overall lifestyle use, though the U11 has a higher maximum brightness and is less temperamental about boosting that brightness in daylight conditions. More content is currently available for 16x9 screens, but taller displays will be all the rage and LG is ahead of the curve. Mainstays like YouTube and Netflix are already well supported, but game scaling is still a bit rough. I'm usually loath to award based on potential, but we're giving LG the win for the more progressive hardware. And the story flip-flops on software. HTC used to be the king of manufacturer skins, tweaking almost every aspect of the UI. But over the last two generations, this company has walked back the severity of sense style alterations. We're pretty close to stock with a few minor additions. HTC's major add-on is a fairly benign software assistant. This little orb floats off to the side when there's relevant information to share with the user. It's not trying to step on Google Assistant's toes, but it also hasn't added much to my use over the time I've had the U11. LG strays farther into manufacturer customizations, some for the benefit of the taller screen, but mostly maintaining some kind of unique feel for their products. One easy example of where this works is adding a little button for auto brightness instead of forcing a user to go through the settings. However, we detailed an example of where manufacturer customizations can fall apart in our G6 versus OnePlus 5 comparison, how several apps failed to properly report what was eating up my storage. I genuinely like a lot of LG's additions, but again, we have to give the software win to the U11 and its simpler layout. It's that simpler software and more powerful chipset which handily deliver the performance win for the U11. That really shouldn't shock anyone in our audience. Last year's chipset in the G6 is still a solid option. Users likely won't notice much difference for covering the basics, UI navigation, or social media. But 2017 is proving to be another good year for Qualcomm. If app developers start pushing the boundaries on services or more graphics intense fare, you'll be buying a little more future-proofing on the U11. And the camera fight was really fun to compare, again for the wildly different approaches. We have real camera reviews for both phones, and if you want the full scoop, we'd highly recommend you check those out for a ton of real-world samples. To boil this down, each phone's strength is the other phone's weakness. HTC delivers a better auto-shooter, which has consistently been LG's main weakness, 
and vice versa. If you want near professional manual controls, LG is one of the best options available on the market today. The one area where HTC clearly has an advantage is with low light performance. The larger sensor and more even-handed sharpening should produce better night images, though we often find ourselves fighting how bright the camera app can push exposure. Yet, for HTC's excellent main camera features, LG's slightly slower focusing system was often less confused by busy backgrounds, and the second sensor is a wonderful addition, lending significant flexibility to phone photography. There's no clear winner here. A well-focused, streamlined shooter, a more flexible array of sensors and controls, and both with phenomenal audio recording options. They will appeal to different audiences, but you can't really go wrong with either if you know what you're in for. Moving to audio, speaker tech is an easy win for HTC, bringing back the dual earpiece and bottom firing speaker. It's not true stereo, but it's more nuanced than a single speaker. Headphone comparison, on the other hand, requires a bit more discussion. The tests we ran during our U11 Real Audio review looked a bit off, so we grabbed a second dongle and we re-ran our benchmarks. This improved some of the noise and dynamic range numbers, but overall quality is still lower than the G6, and playback is still truncated to 16-bit audio. The amps are similar in output, which is one of the more noticeable elements of a good headphone jack. Regular, everyday use MP3s users won't be punished by this dongle. But this is not audiophile grade for folks who already own nicer headphones. Another problem though, we faced more audio gremlins on this new adapter. Our first pass on the audio test delivered some strange distortion. HTC's main commitment to audio is focused on the included earbuds. The tech is phenomenal for how HTC scans your ears to customize output, and the combo of passive and active noise reduction is terrifically implemented. But we still have concerns over proprietary audio solutions. Sure, this is USB-C, but these don't play with any other USB-C device, and if you lose one, say while traveling, it's highly unlikely you could easily track down a replacement. LG's solution on the G6 isn't quite as techy cool, but the 3.5mm jack is built in and it produces a higher quality output. So, LG takes the headphone win. And looking at runtime, neither phone proves to be a battery champ in our media bench. The U11's newer processor is more power efficient, but the battery is also smaller, so any advantage there is effectively neutralized. And funnily, our recharge test was also nearly identical. The G6 is technically charging faster, the same percentage of a larger battery, but in practical use, these two are essentially the same. Lastly, it should also be mentioned that HTC delivers a more complete experience out of the box. Snap-on clear case, headphone adapter, headphones, the U11 kinda needs those additions in my opinion, so it's nice to see them in the box. So let's wrap this up. Where's that leave us between the HTC U11 and the LG G6? Comparisons are always more fun when you've got a close fight. The main takeaway, two brands battling, bringing their A-game, and both delivering fresh takes on phone design. As the guy who produces the camera reviews rolling around in the dirt, I'm a bigger fan of the higher rated durability certification and manual camera controls. I prefer the traditional headphone jack and this screen aspect ratio is daring. LG is doing a very good job of demonstrating what can be done with a taller display. However, in this moment, phone to phone, HTC produces the better consumer all-rounder, the more powerful phone and the more streamlined experience. Out of the box and in the hand, the U11 will likely resonate with more general consumers looking for something with a little flash and something that gets out of the way of their most used data and services. Though there is a significant pricing difference at the time this comparison was shot, the costs make sense and compare well against each other. Different philosophies for different target consumers. Which phone would win your cash? Vote in our viewer poll in the upper right hand corner of this video. 
As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for more comparisons like these and check out our expanded coverage like real camera and real audio reviews and help us out with some sharing on your favorite social networks. For Pocket Now, I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell, some gadget guy on Twitter and Instagram, and I will catch you all on the next review.